man, it is insane. This was 3D printed in Dresden on the new Elego Mars 3. And this, and this, and this, and this. The Mars 3 has 30% higher resolution than similar LCD printers. Does it make any difference? Yeah, it does. If you don't have a 3D printer yet, this is a good moment. There is much competition and prices just plummeted. I have a few great printers to review and today we are looking at the Mars 3 that Elego was kind to send me. To be clear, this video is not sponsored. Smaller pixels change everything, I'll show you. But first, let's unbox it. No, 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 <laughs> not like this, gee. The paper manual should guide you through your first test print and the basic settings of the Cheeto Box slicer. Then you have a small box with essential tools. In my case, the zip bag was open and there were screws all over the place. Well, extra screws. The printer comes fully assembled. Everything comes super well protected. The Mars 3 is quite unique. It is very compact and all-rounded. Most printers are very boxy. Even so, the build plate is a bit bigger than the previous Mars series, so you can print bigger models. If you are new to resin printers, you pour resin on a vat and the resin is hardened by ultraviolet light that comes from the bottom. So the resin tank has a thin transparent plastic FAP film. This is the material that DuPont trademarked as Teflon in 1945. On the Mars 3, the UV light is shaped by a 4K LCD. It's a crazy number of pixels on a small printer. And that's the biggest advantage of the Mars 3, the 35 microns resolution. The printer is lightweight, excellent finish. The stepper motor might be quite strong, the thread rod is hard to spin. There is no noticeable backlash or play anywhere, it feels very tight. The red cover protects the uncured resin from external UV light. So rounded, custom and beautiful. Right, the tools. It comes with a pair of gloves, power cable, power adapter, a few filtering paper funnels, a metal scraper, you use it so much, a plastic scraper that you should not use, backup screws and hex keys, two face masks, cutter pliers that you will use a lot to remove supports, and another lost screw, and a USB flash drive. And that's all, let's print something. I watched a lot of videos before, but this was my first personal experience with a resin printer, so I followed the instructions to level the build plate, find the ideal pressure on the paper, not too strong, not too loose, set the Z to zero, check that the LCD and the UV lights were working, poured resin on the tank, there were no leaks, fixing the tank and printing the Rooks test. This is so different from the traditional plastic filament 3D printers. You have no idea of what's going on. And indeed, when it was over, I had nothing on the plate. I emptied the vat and there they were. This. I cleaned the build plate, releveled and tried again. This time I got perfect towers. But that's just part of the process. If you don't clean and cure them properly instead of this beauty, you get this lemon. Yeah, all gooey. Elego has a new Mercury X bundle with two stations, one for cleaning and one for curing, with digital timers. I will make a separate video about them, but really, if you are into resin printing, I cannot recommend them enough. It will make your life so much easier. I said the Mars 3 has higher resolution. What does it mean? Three things. First, there are details you cannot print using other printers. Second, there is something on the Mars 3 that will affect all your models. And some resins won't get you the same level of details. So let's begin with the Amera Labs Town test number 9. On the kit box slicer, you can see the squares and circles going from small to super tiny. If you slice it for the Mars 3, here in the middle, squares are still squares, circles are still circles, and there will be something to be printed even on this edge. Now, if you slice it for the Mars 2, here in the middle, everything already looks like a square, and here, the printer doesn't even have a chance. There will be nothing on the file to be printed. Oh, but the Amerilabs Town is a benchmark model. No real model will benefit from a couple of extra pixels, right? Do you print miniatures? 
Check this out. I took the Philanium Malcolm model to Cheetahbox. Yeah, it's big. I scaled it to 25%. That's a super small, nice gift. If I slice it for the Mars 2 and pay attention to the axis base, in one of the sides, the details were so small, smaller than a single pixel. So in the end, the axis base on that side get completely flat. But then I sliced it for the Mars 3. Pay attention to the axis base. There are details on both sides. On this side, they are two pixels tall. On the other side, just one pixel. But it's there. I printed it and here you have details on both sides. The difference was one pixel. The point here is smaller pixels can show smaller details. Now I will show you something that a few YouTubers already noticed. I will call it the Minecraft effect. This rook looks gorgeous, but it was printed at 50 microns. Pay attention at the light reflection here. Shiny, matte, shiny, dull. It is weird because it looks as if the part was made of different materials. This side it looks like plastic, but here it almost looks like if it was velvet coated. A smooth surface is consistent in how it reflects light. And indeed, with much smaller pixels, this rook printed at 35 microns has much less Minecraft effect. Reflections look right all around. At 50 microns, grey resins look a bit like frosted glass or fine sandblasted. The light is diffused, reflections are scattered. It is quite nice, but it also softens your perception of details. Look, with a bunch of light, the difference is subtle. But when lights are further away, reflections are quite different. And here you can clearly see how this curve in the helmet looks sharper. Although, and this might not be what you expect, such smoother surface looks more like plastic. And any scratch that the piece suffers gets much more clearly visible later on. I see many people trying to see the difference in quality of the Mars 3 using grey resins. This might not be ideal. When I printed using an ABS-like grey, not from Elegoo, well, it looked great. But grey resins seems to be thicker and powdery. It was more difficult to print the super thin lines and tails. And at the same time, it was more prone to fill and clog small grooves and channels. When I used the Elegoo plant-based black, it was so much easier to get all the details. The tiniest lines were printed and the small grooves were dry, crystal sharp. Each resin type and color is different. You should test each resin you have to find the ideal exposure and also to discover how much detail and sharpness you can expect from each one. The Mars 3 is fast, good build volume, really high resolution. It's a bit more expensive, but still a fair price. If you are beginning with resin 3D printing, this is an excellent start. I will make a separate video just about anti-aliasing on the Mars 3, but I will post it on a new channel I am making just about 3D printing. And Elego just announced they will also make a DLP version of the Mars 3. <laughs> My goodness! And stay tuned for my review of the Fox Lab Proxima 2K and the Lotmax Shark V2. Subscribe and I will see you soon.